The two groups of equations indicate how each of the four components of planned aggregate expenditure is determined in our model. Adding them up, we get the AE equation as the sum of the four equations. And, or, now we return to the graph, showing the relationship between AE and Y. Recall from national accounts that, by definition, output is mirrored by income, so that the letter Y indicates output as well as income. Since planned consumption varies with income, we can add the linear consumption function to the graph. Another component of planned aggregate expenditure is planned investment, I bar. Since we assume that planned investment is independent of income, we add the investment function to the graph as a straight line parallel to and on top of the consumption function. Turning to government expenditure, G, G is also assumed exogenous at G bar. So we add the function for government expenditure to the graph parallel to and on top of the C plus I line, as we do with exogenous net exports, NX bar. The MOVE line is the sum of the four components of planned aggregate expenditure. So the line is the planned aggregate expenditure function. Notice that the intercept of the AE line is determined by the exogenous parameters of the planned aggregate expenditure model, increasing or decreasing as they increase or decrease. Notice also that the slope of the AE function is determined by the slope of the consumption function, since that is the only function with a slope different than zero. Consequently, if the slope of the consumption function, that is, if the MPC, changes, the slope of the AE function changes accordingly. Now, Let's focus on the AE function and the theory that planned aggregate expenditure varies with income.